Okay, we have implement the recycle view and let's scroll so that we can scroll down continuously until the ends of the content. And now we're gonna make this recycle view items to have an options for select update or remove the items from the layout. So let's go to the item layout. We will insert the three dots symbols, which is known as the options. Okay, so to display that symbol, we have to set the text with this value. And then we're gonna set the layout width for 20 dp because by default, as we see here, there is a small area and it is difficult to click on that. And about the height, we're going to wrap content and we set the size to 20 sp and then the id. So now let's go to the employee view holder, which we're gonna find the control in this layout. We're gonna insert another tag view for the option, and we're gonna find the view by the ID. And then we're going to implement the action when we click on it, which is in RV adapter class. So we're gonna call the option control, and then we're gonna set the click listener. Okay, right now we're going to instance the object's pop-up menu, which is built-in class to show the menu dialog. At first, we're gonna pass the context and then the view that we're working with. And now we're going to start inflate the menu. And here we're not yet designed the menu option. So let's go ahead to create a new folder for store any menus if you have more than one. And then we're going to create a new menu resource file and the name is the options underscore menu.xml and then we're gonna hit the OK button and now we will insert two options menu one is for the editing and the second one is for remove the item we're gonna place the ID menu underscore edit and the titles is edit. And then we're gonna copy that and paste it back. We're gonna change the ID and the title name, okay? And in preview, we see here, the menu is pop up on the toolbars. So don't concern about that. It's just a preview only. And that is depend on what we call this menu to place on whatever we want. And now we have designed the menu. So then get back to our class of the adapter. And then we're gonna place that menu layout file in the method. Okay, the menu is now with the item. So the action that we're going to do is when we click on the specific item, edit or remove, we're gonna perform each behaviors. To do this, we're gonna set other click listener, but we don't know which one is edit, which one is update menu. So we have to check the menu item object we just drop down with the ID here. So remember that here we have the given ID in the menu layout file, which menu edit and the menu remove. So we're gonna say switch item dot get item ID first we're gonna check in case menu edit we're gonna send the object employee to the main activity back because we already have the form already okay so then we're gonna say intent new intent and the parameter is context and then we're going to open the main activity class so now we're going to put extra object employee with a name the attribute name here and then we're going to pass the value the object employee and now we're going to start the activity with that intent and we're going to finish this edit first before we move to the remove function so this block statements we send the data employee to the main activity and we're going to change the flow in the main activity class so let's go back to the main activity class and then we're going to get the object employee from the item that we passed from. So let's say get intent 
get serialization extra and that's because we send the object that's why we use this function okay and then we're going to put the name which is edit and we know exactly that it's only the employee so we're going to cast that object to the employee Okay, so now here we have to check if the object is not null, means we pass it from the item for the edit. Okay, we're going to update the button text value to the update. And then let's pass the data to both edit text. And after that, we're going to hide the open button. And else, if the object employees is null, means it is insert function. Okay, so we update to the button value to the submit, and we change the button open to the visible. For the button click submit, actually we already defined the flow to insert employee, so. Then we're going to check if the object employee is null. We're going to make this block statement happen. And else, we're going to update the records which is we have done in the part one. So let's copy and we paste it back in here. Now, if you look at this, the key is important for update. So how do we get those key? To do that, we have to define the property keys in the model class. So let's go back to open that class. And we're going to add a new property, which is the key. And then we generate the getter and setter. And this field, we just need to only set and access the key from the Firebase database. So we don't need to save that field into the database. So then we're going to add the annotation at exclude. That means we exclude this property to sell into our database. Okay, so we have to set the property manually when we manipulate the data. That means in the RBA activity class, we're gonna set the key here. So then we call the get key in the main activity class. And we're going to call the finish to close the activity after we have done on the update function. Okay, now we're going to working on the remove function. We're gonna check in case ID menu is removed. We're going to place this code that we have done in the part one again for remove the record from the database. And then the key here we're going to change is to get key property which we have defined after that if we remove successfully we are gonna call the method notify item remove with the position and this method will remove the layout item from the recycler view so that it will make sense when we remove the record from the firebase database and the layout item is disappeared too Okay guys, so now we have done both functions with the UI. So let's taste this application. We're going to open the recycler view activity. And now we can see this symbol and we're going to click on that and it's gonna show the menu. At first, we're going to edit. I'm gonna modify something here to another text. And we can see it is update the data. And now let's taste on the remove function. And I'm going to remove in here. And now we can see that it works. So for remove function in the real project, we can add the dialog message to confirm the user to remove or not because it is a dangerous function. Okay guys. We have done both edit and remove functions with the UI. 
So I hope you learned something in here and don't forget to subscribe, like, share my video and we're going to see you in the next video.